right, so we're uh, at Amnesia. It's uh, the Elro party, Technasia joining us here. We're uh, backstage as the party's going on out front. Uh, it's been a while. We, we connected about a year and a half ago when you came to Ottawa. I remember we did an interview, you sitting in a car, and it was just absolutely freezing cold. A little different than today, isn't it? Yes, very different. Very different, actually. Um, um, actually, I didn't even remember it was, it was you. So it's kind of a coincidence. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, the, compl the complete opposite, I would say. Even. I mean, that was a small party in Ottawa. Tonight we have, I think, 6,500 people, 7,000 people here. So it's Ibiza, you know. It's raining tonight, but it's really hot, so it's going to be good. I've got uh, 10 categories here that we can talk about. We can talk about one of those categories. We can talk about all 10 of them. We can pick and choose. Uh, I've been doing it randomly, so I would say if you have something, I can show you the list and we can talk about it. However you want to pick a number, we'll go forward with that. Let's go for it. Whatever okay, you want. so pick a number. Uh, two. Two. Touring. So what's been the, the touring of late, and is it still a big challenge uh, to get around places? Uh, yeah, I mean, touring has been pretty hectic. I mean, obviously, we're in September now, so summer is just finished. I mean, it's finishing. Um, summer is the busiest time for DJs from the end of May all the way to like mid September. It's hectic. It's like 12, 13, 14 shows, 16 shows, 18 shows a month. So you, you, you spend basically your summer touring like crazy. Um, and basically, when you arrive in September, you're kind of happy that the summer has passed. Because, uh, yeah, it's very tiring. Very, very tiring. That's maybe the part that a lot of people don't see uh, with, uh, with the DJs, that they, they see us performing for like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. But they don't see that sometimes we have to, to travel 24 hours just to get a show to, to play like an hour and a half. So the amount of time that we spend traveling in airports, in connections, in transfers, whatever, just to play like all these shows, is sometimes it's completely crazy. And when it's like months and months of this, it's, it's very active. What's the toughest trip to make for you from your sort of home base? What, what's really tough to get to? Uh, Australia. Australia because you have to, to stop somewhere anyway um, in Asia. And when you arrive in Australia, you basically, time is the, it's the complete opposite. When it's midday here, it's like midnight there. So, and you have to play at night. Um, so it's midday for you, so it's fine. But then you have to sleep uh, after you play and you cannot sleep because it's like the afternoon. So it's a complete disaster. Every time I go to Australia, I'm, I'm upside down, man. I, I don't know where I am. It's really hard because you need to be ready to perform as well. So you need to be 100%, but you, you're not 100%. It's very tough. Do you want to continue on number two touring, or do you want to pick another number? Uh, yeah, I'll pick number seven. Seven, other genres of music. What is it that you're listening to that's outside of what you play? To be honest, I don't listen that much music. Uh, because, I mean, I used to listen to a lot of music, but uh, I don't so much anymore simply because uh, I spend a lot of time making music, I spend a lot of time playing music, so during my free time, I, I don't like to, to listen to music. I like my ears to relax, to chill. I watch, I watch some movies, but um, I don't listen to much music at home, no. Uh, not that much. Um, I can tell you about my, my influences. Um, I, I come from Gothic rock. And, and punk rock uh, back in the back in the late 80s, uh, beginning of the 90s. Um, I also like uh, jazz very much. Um, I listen a bit of everything, to be honest. Uh, of course, I was into the very early acid house and everything late late 80s, uh, beginning of the 90s as well. Um, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that has really uh, marked me. New wave stuff a lot. Uh, I was also a big Depeche Mode fan. Uh, that's why my my first uh, my first records uh, in the late 90s were. A little bit sounding like like Depeche Mode stuff sometimes. Um, yeah, that's my that's my influences. In general. Pick another number. Nine. 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 Uh, new music. What's new that you're really liking? What are you championing right now? You mean that I that I that I make or 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 someone that you're you're really in the vibe for right now and you really like what he or she is doing? I, I'm very picky. Um, I'm very picky because I I've been around for quite a while, so I know. I've seen a lot of different producers, a lot of different uh, artists, and of course I've got my, my heroes, you know, so, which will be always very bit difficult to match, you know, but um, right now there's one artist that is really good, it's Dennis Cruz from, from Spain. Um, he's been growing little by little. Uh, the last one year has been booming, it's touring everywhere. 
uh, we play back to back sometimes together because he's got that I don't know I can describe it it's like a, a, a dark tech house uh, maybe um, I don't know it's not techno it's not tech house it's between the two he's got his own flavor he's got his own groove uh, he, he plays very good as well as a DJ um, so the first time I saw him play I was like man that dude is gonna be it's gonna be very good and right now it's, it's really booming another number Four. Four. Ibiza, talk to me about the island here. Has it changed in the last little while? I only came the first time last year, and people are saying, oh, it's a big change over the last five, ten years. Has it changed for you? Well, the first time that I ever played in Ibiza was actually in this club, Amnesia. I was in 99. So it was for the first uh, cocoon party, which is not here anymore. Um, so I, I've seen the island for nearly 20 years. I've seen the changes. I mean, Back in the days, you used to have only like two, three parties. You know, there was the Carl Cox event, uh, the Carl Cox party, there was the, the Cocoon party, there was the, the Eric Morillo party, and Money Mission and a few other ones, and that's it. Um, about 10 years ago, the numbers of events have, have increased drastically. Um, a lot of DJs that were not performing in Ibiza before started to come. Ibiza opened to a lot of different genres, because there used to be here a lot of house and progressive house and things like that. Uh, now you have a lot of techno parties, um, you have a lot of commercial events too, like EDM and all these things. So the island has opened a lot to, to electronic music in general, which is great. Um, it gathered obviously a lot more people coming from, from all over Europe. And let's say for the last four or five years, it's, it appeals a lot of people from Asia, uh, from North America, from South America as well. Um, so uh, I would say the number of, of people uh, coming to the island has, has topped. The last, the last three, four years. Um, this came with with uh, uh, a price to pay, which is the prices for this island have increased like crazy. So you used to be able to to go to the club for twenty dollars or whatever. You know now you have events like Air Road that cost seventy, eighty dollars just to get in without drinks. Um, to housing here is crazy. Hotels prices are up the charts. Um, so problem is that for the last two three years prices have gone so high that people start to feel a little bit annoyed with this and start to go to other places so um, like Croatia like um, like uh, Greece um, so what happens is um, this year we've seen a little decrease in numbers for the island uh, which is not a good sign because I think it's time that everybody kind of wakes up uh, and understands that um, this island needs to keep on going because it's the heart of electronic dance music. It's always been. And we don't want to see other places um, take over uh, what's happening in this island. Because, you know, there's nowhere else in the world, in the world where you can have five months every day, uh, massive events with the best DJs in the world performing every night. Nowhere in the world. And that creates, of course, a, a very amazing vibe when it comes to, to, to the music, uh, electronic music lovers and we don't want to see that go away. Uh, there is another factor that, that has changed on the island, which is um, you see a lot, of, um, a lot of people with a lot of money coming, uh, which you couldn't see that, I mean, you could see them before, but the VIP thing in Ibiza right now, the VIP business is huge, like it is in Mykonos. And that, you know, goes against, uh, you know, having big events like Arrow, like MusicCon, where you have six, 7,000 people because not six and seven thousand people can have a VIP table which costs four or five thousand dollars, you know? So um, prices go up a lot, people can afford it, and I think this is the biggest change that we've seen maybe uh, on this island. So, I mean, I wish that everybody here is gonna start to wake up and maybe put the price down a little bit, or maybe change the prices uh, from the beginning to the city on the way to the end. Of course, in August, it's expensive because everybody, everybody goes at the same time, but you know, when it's June or July and you still have to pay three, four hundred bucks to go to a, to a two-star hotel here, you know, it's a, it's a little bit pushing it, so, yeah. Is there a, a suggestion for someone to go, whether it's a restaurant, a place to see on the island, that you would say, oh, it's a little uh, haven for yourself? There's a place that, that is very known like, amongst people that come to Ibiza for, for a long time. Uh, it's called the Fish Shack. Um, it's, it's basically um, a restaurant that is on a, on a cliff, uh, close to um, close to Sapunta, close to uh, Destino. Um, they cook fish. It's, a, it's an illegal restaurant, but it's been there since 
I think 30 years, same people, uh, it's very good food. Uh, it's really the island's just table put on a cliff, a little kitchen there, you know, and uh, you always see like a lot of famous DJs, famous people going there because it's a place where people like to meet to have a, a quiet talk or, uh, you know, like good, a good fish with friends or whatever. They close very early, they close at 9 30, 10 uh, at, 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 at dawn, you know, so it's basically. It's a, good, it's a good place to try, to see something different from what you see in Pride and Bosa, or, it's very different. It's, it's a good experience for Ibiza. Uh, might have to check that one out. Uh, do you want one more number before we uh, you head off? Uh, six. Six, personal life. Tell me something that you've never told anybody before in an interview. <laughs> I used to have hair. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm gonna say that in the interview. I used to have a lot of hair, but because I was into gothic rock, I loved to, to, to dye my hair and color my hair, like in every color possible. So when I was like 16, 17, I had red color, red, red color blue hair, uh, yellow hair, green hair, like all colors, you know? And I kept on doing that like all the time and all the time until the day that um, my hair started to fall. So I think that was when I was like 19, 20 years old. So, uh, you know, I paid the price of doing that shit myself, you know. Back in the days, in, you had to buy this product from the supermarket. They were really bad, they were really acid, really bad for your hair. So basically, I lost all my hair when I was like, uh, yeah, like 20 years old. And I started to shave at that time. See, and mine went gray or white from it as opposed to falling out. So I know your hardships. All right, very good. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for your time. Looking forward to, uh, to hearing your set tonight. Again, as you said, busy, busy night out there already. And... Uh, it's uh, it's been a while since I've been to an Elro party, and it looks gorgeous out there. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks to you. Thank you very much.